This is QTV News. I am Maria Tusidibe and thanks for joining us. First, the main local business and international news headlines. In local news... Semlex, a multinational company providing biometric card services, has its office shut down by GRA officials for alleged non-payment of taxes. Aida Jengjai, the director of Tourism International at Gambia's Tourism Board, has expressed satisfaction while on a tour of tourism sites with the Minister of Tourism. The Gambia National Youth Council organizes orientation for journalists in reporting on migration and children on the move and child rights issues. In business news, Tourism Minister Hamad Ba orders the temporary closure of two popular lodges in the Lower River region due to poor facilities. In international news, Polls close in Cameroon's controversial elections and winter storms cause havoc in Europe. And now the local news in detail. The Gambia Revenue Authority on Monday ordered the temporary closure of Semlex, the national identity cards producing company, allegedly for not paying tax since the company began operating in the country. QTV's Ansumana Isonyasi reports. Semlex is a Belgian-based company founded in 1992 and involved in producing biometric cards and operates in 20 African countries and around the world. The company and its affiliates have come under intense scrutiny and allegations of corruption and tax evasion have been very rife in recent years. Despite the controversy, the Gambia government in July 2018 announced it had entered into a five-year agreement with the company to produce national biometric identity cards. The Gambia Revenue Authority, which has ordered the temporary closure of the company, alleges that Semlex has not fulfilled its tax obligations. Semlex officials on Monday sold KTV what appears to be an agreement they signed with the Gambia government, Article 5 and 7 of which they claimed exempts the company from paying any customs duties or taxes. However, closer scrutiny of the document appeared to show what was confirmed by the Commissioner General of the Gambia Revenue Authority, Yankuba Dabo, who told journalists at a press conference that the said agreement on non payment of tax does not cover domestic tax. He also says that Semlex has not produced a special interest certificate as they are required to by law to show that they are legally exempted from paying any taxes. We don't have a problem. Honestly, we don't have a problem with them having SIC even tomorrow. If they have it, no problem. But as long as they don't have SIC, they have to pay their taxes. There's nobody in this country, no institution, no individual that is, will be working in this country and you don't have tax exemption and you exist. Even if you don't, if you don't come, you think you are hiding, we will get you. The GRA Commissioner General went on to add that GRA has written to Semlex several times, each time reminding them of their tax obligations. The company would ask for an extension. Clarifying the matter of a special investment certificate, the GRA boss says only the president has the prerogative to issue a special investment certificate, which is then subject to National Assembly approval. Semlex, he adds, is yet to secure or produce one. If you have a document, you think that document has made you not to pay, then why do you have to deal with GRA? Just submit that document to them. You can have a, a letter written by, I won't want to mention, but you can have a letter written from different corners, different people, but does that necessarily mean that document is authentic to a point that the GRA will accept that? We are established by an act of parliament and we are entrusted by the government to take care of the tax issues in this country. Therefore, if anybody has a document that exempts you from paying tax, no matter, we have different uh, codes of taxes that you pay. If you have any document, bring it to GRA. Ask how much Semlex owes GRA. Dabo says given that negotiations for a possible settlement plan have begun, the authority cannot as yet disclose the amount owed. However, he warns that non-compliance with tax obligations can attract severe penalties. At the time of this broadcast, it remains unclear how an international company can have failed to properly scrutinize the terms of its contract with a country. We will, of course, bring an update 
on this matter when we have it. And Shumana is Nyasi for KTV News. The Director for Tourism International at the Gambia Tourism Board, Aida Jengjai, has expressed satisfaction with what she sees in rural Gambia. However, she says there is a lot more to be accomplished in the upcountry. Ali Usise reports. Speaking to QTB on the last day of the first leg of the tourism officials on going to of tourism facilities, the Director for Tourism International at the Gambia Tourism Board so the standard of facilities is critical in marketing destinations of Gambia tourists. We need to develop upcountry tourism. Reason being is that is where you have the real culture of Gambia. That is where you can feel the real Gambia. I'm not saying you cannot feel the real Gambia in other regions, but the authentic Gambia experience is upcountry. According to her, the tour is very important in mapping out the way forward for the sector to attract more tourists. Um, we, we, we try to market the Gambia with what we have. And that is moreover the reason why, why all the sectors that are important or that are working with tourism are here on the store. Because this is not only for the Gambia Tourism Board. If you have noticed, you've seen NCAC. They're responsible for culture. So upcountry facilities is not only about building rooms or bringing the tourists. You need to know when you bring the tourists what the tourists need to see. You need to sell those attractions. Hence the reason why you've seen NCAC to show us the sites and educate us more. Although we know some, but to educate us more about the sites and the things that we need to do on those sites and also the accomplished uh, act, other activities that are surrounding those sites that can be sellable and marketable to attract the type of tourists that we want for the Gambia. And if you notice as well, you've seen GTHI. And GTHI's role is to help because yes, we have the facilities, but service is very important. GTHI's role is to see how best they can also come on board to assist these facilities to ensure that they have the high expected standard of service that is required in these upcountry facilities. Without these upcountry facilities, you cannot sell what the Gambia has to offer. Without improving these upcountry facilities, you can't really sell what the real Gambia has to offer or the Gambia, or you cannot sell the Gambia experience. Upcountry facilities is the Gambia experience. The tourism minister and delegates on had several sport visits, including of Sindola Safari Lodge in Kanilai, the home village of former president Yaya Jame. The lodge is one of ex-president Jame's properties identified for CISO following the general commission's recommendations. Also visited was Apkas Creek Lodge, located in the village of Kasang in the Fonjibitan region. It is built by Abdul Gay and wife Colleen, whose contribution to the communities there is highly appreciated and acknowledged by the locals, including the Alcala of Kasang village. Tourism Minister Hamadba was impressed with how the two places are managed. I think they are the, they are the right product we are looking for and trying to replicate throughout the country. These, are, these properties are very well managed and they are to the best of standard internationally. Nationally and internationally. This is what we want to promote. We want to improve the quality of our product so that we can sell better and make better money for reinvestment for the proprietors. I think this is the type of thing government wants to promote. We are extremely impressed and pleased with it. The tour continues in West Coast Region and Canfi Municipality. Reporting for QTV News, I am Alu Sise. The Gambia National Youth Council on Monday organized orientation for journalists in reporting on migration and children on the move and child rights issues. The day-long meeting brought together 25 journalists from the print and electronic media. Ahmad Oba attended the orientation and this is his report. The day-long orientation will help journalists understand irregular migration, which exposes children to gross violations of their rights, including abuse, exploitation, and neglect, also to ensure the protection of children at home or on the move, which requires a responsive child protection system. 
Alaji Jaju is the program manager of the Gambia National Youth Council. Generally, children, you know, on the move, be it migrating within, you know, the Gambia unaccompanied or even migrating outside of the Gambia, we know a lot of harm, you know, that can happen to them along those lines when they move unaccompanied. So that is why we are bringing media personalities together so they are able to help us send these messages. And what we expect from them after the training is to be able to go out there and get us some very good human interest stories that they are able to go out there, investigate the stories, come back to their media houses and help report these stories that should be of great interest uh, to, to, you know, to the government public in general. Despite the increasing vulnerability and dangers that children are exposed to, they and their parents continue to believe that without migrating to Europe, life will not improve for them. Families invest heavily in supporting their children to migrate using the illegal so-called backway and frequently the return on investment is negligible. Njundu Drame, a child rights activist and trainer, highlights the importance of the training to media practitioners, noting that it is everyone's responsibility to protect the rights of children. The way the media portray children is how society would also look at children, how society would either praise or condemn children. So we, I hope that at the end of the training, media practitioners would know how to report issues relating to children in a very ethical manner, be sensitive to the rights and needs of children, and be able to, to portray children in a, in a better, better light, and better manner, so that society appreciates children, so that society supports children, so that society fulfills the rights of children. Uh, media practitioners have that very important role to play to serve as advocates. Luis S.A. Alsan a participant and student at the Media Academy for Journalism and Communications, Majak, says the training will help her greatly to exercise her role in protecting children's rights. Expecting to see some, the act of willingness amongst us to make sure that those, those policies put there to protect these children are implemented, forcefully implemented. Because it's too sad. We all see what is happening. The laws are there. The policies are there, but actions are not taken. And they are affected by every decision taken by us, taken by the parliament, taken by the government. They are affected in, affected in every way. The then United Nations Secretary General Javier Perez de Coya, commenting during the drafting of the Convention on the Rights of the Child, said this. The way society treats its children reflects not only its qualities of compassion and protective caring, but also its sense of justice and its commitment to the future. For QTV News, I am Amadou Oba. Cancer Confrontation Care and Consolation, The Gambia, C3G, on Monday signed a grant agreement of 48,280 euros with the Japanese grant for grassroots projects, GGP. Bintu Koka was at the signing ceremony and Shina reports. The grant will be used to establish a laboratory in Edward Francis Small Teaching Hospital for the treatment of cancer. The grant will be used to purchase an immunochemistry machine, automated biochemistry machine, fully automated hematology machine, a generator, and aid coagulation therapy machine for cervical cancer. Dr. Abu Bakarja, chairperson of Cancer Confrontation Care and Consolation de Gambia, speaks on the aims and objectives of C3G. It's a non-profit, non-governmental organization that was established to contribute towards the population well-being by reducing the incidence and impact of cancer through the provision of efficient and evidence-based preventive, promotive, curative and palliative care services accessible to all Gambians. The main aim of C3G is to contribute towards the reduction of cancer incidence and mortality and improve quality of life for patients and their families in the Gambia. Dr. Ja adds that the grant will strictly be used for cancer patients in the Gambia. Exclusively for cancer patients uh, when they are having their chemotherapy or when they are being diagnosed. C3G will use the grant of about 50,000 euros to purchase an immunochemistry machine an automated biochemistry machine, a fully automated uh, hematologic uh, um, uh, diagnostic machine, a generator, and eight 
coagulation therapy machines, uh, which was uh, pretty much uh, uh, advocated for. Japan's ambassador to the Gambia, His Excellency Arai Tatsuo, says the government of Japan supported the project to strengthen the capacity of Edward Francis Small Teaching Hospital. Is that most of people are often diagnosed late, and as for the Gambia, the expertise for treatment and material resources are not yet sufficient. However, it is essential to detect cancer early signs in order to limit the spread of the disease. Dr. Amadou Lamin Samate, Minister of Health, says the ministry is doing a lot to be able to contain cancer by creating policies and educating the population. It's in the process of setting up a national cancer control program that is going to have its own offices separate. That will be dedicated to the management of cancer in this country. And we are also in the process of developing the cancer control policy and the strategic plan for the control of all cancers in this country. C3G aims to confront cancer through health education and promotion, contribute in providing care for diagnosed cancer patients, and contribute to end life care for those who have late-stage incurable disease. Bintu Koka, QTV News. We will go with a short commercial break, and when we come back, we hear why the Minister of Tourism has ordered the closure of two lodges. And in international news, Cameroon's President Bia looks to consolidate his 37-year rule as the opposition boycott the elections. Join us after the break for these stories, sports news and more. Oh yes! QSAL has exhausted the number 3 series, the 50, 51, 52 and 53 number series. We are expanding and introducing another new number series starting with 58 and 59. With the 58 and 59 numbers, you can call any QSAL number for the same on-net charges. You get the same great service at the exact same charges offered to numbers in the 3, 50, 51, 52 and 53 series. The family is even bigger now. For more information, call customer care on 111. QSAL, we innovate, others follow. Welcome back. In business news, Tourism Minister orders closure of two lodges. As part of his ongoing tour of tourism-related facilities and sites, Tourism Minister Hamad Ba has ordered the temporary closure of two popular lodges in the Lower River region due to poor facilities. Alusise reports. Trans Gambia Highway Lodge and Moses Guest House are among the oldest and the most popular lodges for visitors to Soma Town. However, the prestige and grandeur that the two were known for is eroding as a result of a decline in standards. Both lodges score very low marks on guest review websites, with one review of Moses Guest House having this description Rooms are basic, ceiling fan, mosquito nets, beware of this, some are ill fitting. Very small toilet shower, beware slippery floor, and a window that is a hole in the wall. Electricity is controlled by owner. Feeble locks on doors. End of quote. The two lodges not only face competition from other lodges, they are on the brink of collapse and in need of serious overhaul and refurbishment. At Moses Guest House, which is known for both accommodation and as a venue for musical performances, is in the worst state of the two. The delegation led by Minister Hamad Ba was dumbfounded by the state of the place. A disappointed Hamad Ba ordered that the lodge be partitioned off and one part of the lodge be closed as it was found to be in a terrible state. The delegation could not get explanation as to why this was as they could not locate the person in charge. In Pakalinding, the Trans Gambia Highway Lodge, Boa Kinte, who built and owns the lodge, is seated in a plastic chair as he missed the delegation. The place has been left to a terrible state, allegedly due to poor management by one of his sons. About 15 young people are employed here. Business is not flourishing as it was, says Karamo Kinte, manager of the lodge. I come here every day. Every day I'm around. 
if you don't want to. So we will sit there for one month, especially this January. That is not business. Because the place is bad, yes. you are yeah. supposed to open for business. Minister Ba gave directives for the GT board to engage the manager of the Trans Gambia Highway Lodge to look at possible ways to improve the place while the lodge is put on temporary closure. This man suffered all his life building this place. They let it deteriorate this level. Sad to cry again. Very sad. It's a pity. Engage him. See what we can do face by face. Huh? And then help him with pricing because three hundred dollars is a non-starter too. Abdullah Hydra, Director General of GT Post, said the Trans Gambia Highway Lodge will be among those they intend to include in what he calls public-private partnership. First and foremost, we will bring here uh, the expert consultant who will assess the structures in terms of its uh, habitability, its usability, and fit for purpose. Once that is established, we will discuss with the owners how he wants us to define the rules of engagement vis-a-vis -vis public private partnership. Or does he have to be um, an SPV, special purpose vehicle, where we have a special arrangement, rehabilitate the camp, give it to a good contract management, and then GT board is not interested in making profit, but to recoup the investment and then uh, roll over to another facility that also requires some support. The delegation also visited Nimas Lodge in Soma, where the minister was impressed by what he saw while offering recommendations to the proprietor, including having wardrobes and flowers for better service delivery. Also visited was Tender Bar Eco Lodge, situated beside the River Gambia. Minister Bar is currently touring the country to assess the state of tourism related facilities. Reporting for QTV News, I am Alu Sise. In international news, Cameroon's Bia looks to strengthen his grip on power. Polls closed in Cameroon yesterday in an election, the lead-up to which has been overshadowed by a boycott by most opposition parties and separatist violence, which had forced thousands to flee from their homes. The elections were the first in seven years after two postponements and many felt they should have been postponed yet again due to the high number of internally displaced people unable to vote. The decision by the opposition to boycott the election is likely to bring about the very thing they would like to bring to an end, namely President Bia's 37-year rule. The 86-year-old Bia is therefore expected to further tighten his grip on power. The large numbers of police and security forces deployed during the day and the allegations of brutality against security forces may have contributed to a surprisingly quiet election day. The main opposition party, the Movement for the Rebirth of Cameroon, refused to field a single candidate in the election, all but guaranteeing an increased majority win for BS People's Democratic Movement. Opposition separatists won an independent state for Cameroon's often marginalized Anglophone population. The conflict in Anglophone regions has been marred by violent squabbles. Official results are expected before the end of the week. Violent storms cause havoc in Europe. A major winter storm named both Sierra and Sabine has passed through the large part of Europe, resulting in a number of deaths across the continent. Weather services say the worst is yet to come. In the UK, the effect has been devastating, leading to death and destruction. In some of the seaside areas, the waves were the highest many had seen in years. Winds registered at 100 mph and in some cases ripped roofs from houses and in Cambridgeshire, a semi-professional football club's pavilions collapsed due to the high winds. In most parts of the UK, flights were grounded and many who tried to make it to work against weather warning advice found themselves stranded at train stations as the operators decided it was too risky running services. The advice continues to be stay indoors unless you have very good reason to go out. Here to give us the latest sports news is Momodo Gajaga. Gajaga, what do you have from the sporting world?
Thank you very much, Mariato. We are going to give you an update on the Gambia's preparations for the beach volleyball in the Olympic Games Tokyo 2020. Well, for the Gambia to qualify, obviously in March, they will have to battle with Kenya, Mauritius, South Sudan and Botswana. This is a qualifier that the Gambia is going to host between the 12th to the 16th of March at the Palmarima Beach. Well, for the team, they have been very much optimistic of qualification despite facing tough nations in these qualifiers. Let's hear from the team captain, Amadou Jaju, and also the coach, ba Babu Karbaro. I'm really having a confidence we can make it because this is a big chance for us. For the first time, I've been playing this type of competition for, for my country, so it's a big opportunity for us. I really have confidence on my boys. I believe you can do it. We really want to make our country proud. And I believe you can do it. We are preparing both mentally and physically and prepared for the forthcoming uh, qualifications as the next stage, and which we hope that Gambia will make it to the final stage for the Olympic qualifications. Away from that, still on the Tokyo Olympic qualifiers, this time in the Paralympics. Modu Gamo is one Paralympian who is also looking forward to qualifying for the Olympic Games in Tokyo 2020. Well, recently he took part in a competition of powerlifting in Nigeria where he had finished his uh, powerlifting first in the 135 kilogram category, um, improving his personal record and moving up to 170. Now he is on his way to Dubai to get to the final qualification spot. If he is able to book a place, then it will be determined in these qualifiers in Dubai. We wish him the best of luck. Back to you, Mariato. Before we end this bulletin of the news, let's take a quick look at our main stories. In local news, Semlex multinational company providing biometric card services has its office shut down by GRA officials for alleged non-payment of taxes. Ida Jengjai, the director for Tourism International at Gambia's Tourism Board, has expressed satisfaction while on a tour of tourism sites with the Minister of Tourism. The Gambia National Youth Council organizes orientation for journalists in reporting on migration and children on the move and child rights issues. In business news, Tourism Minister Hamad Ba has ordered the temporary closure of two popular lodges in the Lower River region due to poor facilities. In international news, polls close in Cameroon's controversial elections and winter storms causes havoc in Europe. That's all we have for you in this edition of the news. Join us tomorrow for more news. Thank you for watching.